digestion. And um, if some people like to experiment with um, honey and um, brown sugars. I've heard a lot of that going on, but refined sugar is the way to go because the um, uh, molasses in the brown sugars can't be digested or broken down by the kombucha itself. So you don't want to go there. And as far as honey goes, honey has antibacterial properties. So if you try to use honey to brew it, it could actually kill the mushroom or give you just an impaired key. Um, but some people mess with it. I like to go the traditional route with it. And um, kombucha was actually invented and created back in um, 212 8 BC in China where they were looking to experiment with all these fungal treatments to attain immortality. And um, one of the things they came up with was kombucha. It was originally known as Ling Chi or the divine tea and um, became really huge over there and later was brought over to Japan by a doctor named Kombu. So that's where it got its name, kombucha. And um, he brought it over to the emperor who was having digestive issues and really fixed them up because that's what this stuff does. And from there, it spread over into Russia and Europe and then finally hit America in around the 1960s with all the other freaky stuff. And um, kombucha works um, on your system mainly in the digestive area. So all the health benefits that come from it, the majority of them are just like secondary because once you take care of your digestive system, as a lot of people get into raw foods now, once you start working on your digestion, your body has the energy it needs and the nutrients it needs to put into other areas of, of your health, like detoxification, weight loss, and such stuff like that. And, uh, any questions so far? Yeah. All right. And um, some of the things that kombucha does, it does give you more energy because when, you, when we're digesting a heavy meal, especially if we eat a lot of cooked foods, the, um, they don't contain the enzymes needed to break themselves down. And when we ingest kombucha, not only does it have a good mass of enzymes in there that help to break that food down for us, but it does contain organic acids and different compounds that help break it down and help us digest it more rapidly and um, also contains probiotics. And a lot of our food is lacking in living, living organisms. Um, in nature, we'd probably be consuming stuff that wasn't washed, hasn't you know, been sterilized like, or cooked or pasteurized, like a lot of things we do consume. So this helps to provide that balance within us, just the same way as the uh, probiotic yogurts do. Um, this provides much the same benefits through this tea here. Hey, Roar, quick question on, on the kombucha teas you see. It says it has like an alcohol percentage in there. Can you talk a little bit about that? Yes, dur during the fermentation process, as in with a lot of fermented foods, there is a small amount of alcohol produced. But at the end uh, result of the kombucha, when you're done brewing it, you'll only have about 0.5% alcohol. So it's kind of like a non-alcoholic beer. So it's nothing really to worry about unless you like play around and let it go forever. And, it starts to get vinegary and you can use it for other things but it's a little funky after that and um some things that another thing that kombucha does is it helps clear up our skin um it can do that it'll do that by consuming it because one of the areas of um getting rid of toxins through our body is our skin and um if your body's having issues passing that stuff out through the kidneys or liver one of the next places it's going to go through is your skin and um, that could lead to all different kinds of issues, acne, pores, rashes, and whatnot. But the um, kombucha, finished kombucha contain, contains uh, glucuronic acids, and they're the same acids that are released by our kidneys and liver to help remove toxins, that binds up the toxins and helps them to be flushed out of our body. So the kombucha adds to that, so it'll help, help you clean that out and won't end up, won't end up on your face. <laughs> and um, also, Kombucha, if you were to test the finished kombucha, it's going to show up as an acid beverage. And a lot of people get into raw foods. You want to, you want to stay away from certain acidic foods. We worry about keeping our bodies alkaline. But when kombucha is broken down in our systems, it actually is alkalizing. So it's another good benefit of it. It's going to help you maintain your pH balance where you want it to be. And, um, and kombucha also does help with weight loss because it boosts our metabolism and um, by providing the cultures and the acids to help break down our foods, 
And um, also, though, if you're having issues with weight, with too much weight loss, the kombucha for people who are um, suffering from the effects of chemotherapy, HIV, and stuff like that, they have been consuming kombucha to actually help them assimilate their nutrients from what food they're able to eat, and it's increasing people's appetites and helping people put on healthy weight gains. So it actually goes both ways. It'll balance you out whatever you need. And um, it also makes a pretty good hair tonic, although I haven't tried it yet. Um, you can blend the, um, the kombucha tea with the uh, scoby itself in a blender with some, oat, with some oatmeal flakes and make like a paste out of it that you can use on your hair and it's said to reduce dandruff and actually um, make your hair stronger and supposedly hair regrowth, but I haven't experienced any luck with that myself yet. <laughs> <laughs>